Okay, here we go. 4.1, <clears throat> apply triangle sum properties. I've been told that I go too slow, so I am gonna zoom through this. And there's a lot of information. A lot of it's stuff, this stuff you know already. Okay, so you're familiar with this stuff, but make sure you pay attention because you do have some problems down here that you need to, to be able to do on your own. And I am not gonna give you full credit for this uh, homework assignment if you simply just copy down what I have here, right? This is to help you to think, so please hang with me, pause the video when you need to, back it up and replay it, or just pause and think about it. Uh, please make sure that you are using your brain and not just copying stuff down. We're looking at uh, chapter 4, section 1, apply triangle sum properties. How do I classify triangles? You know how to do that. And find measures of their angles. So let's first remind yourself how to classify triangles. We can do that by their sides or by their angles. When we classify triangles by their sides, either we have none of the sides that are congruent. None of these sides are the same length. That's called a scalene triangle or two of the sides are congruent, meaning they have the same length. And notice here that I put in red, so if you would emphasize that somehow in your notes, those congruent markings, these two sides of the triangle are congruent. And as you know, that's an isosceles triangle. And by the way, <clears throat> in an isosceles triangles, triangle, these base angles are also congruent. So let's put little arcs there uh, telling us that those two are the base angles are congruent. But the main thing is that two sides are congruent. That's an isosceles triangle. And then when all three sides are congruent, that's an equilateral. Lateral means side. Equa means equal, of course. So equal side lengths, all three of them. Now notice here, they could have put just one tick mark for each of these, as long as they are the same markings. But maybe they were trying to distinguish that from over here. And so you would not be confused that, hey, there's one tick mark here. There's also one tick mark over here. Maybe these two sides are congruent with each other. So maybe that's why they use double tick marks. So there's different ways, as I've talked about, different ways of designating congruence. The main thing is that they have the same markings on all three of them there. And then, so that is classifying triangles by sides. Let's classify uh, triangles by angles now. And you know that of all three of the angles, are less than 90 degrees and here we're talking about interior angles so this little diagram it's hard to see on your copy but uh, if you would emphasize on the inside you know interior means inside uh, emphasize these inside angles and uh, these are interior angles in contrast to exterior angles. So here's the inside of the triangle. On the outside, over here, these are exterior angles. Now to understand or to identify these exterior angles, you have to draw auxiliary lines. Auxiliary. So please label these lines that extend beyond the triangle. We call those auxiliary. Um, for example, you, you might have auxiliary power to a certain system, so it's on the side. It's not the main thing, but it's auxiliary, it's on the side, it's a backup. So here are lines that extend beyond the true triangle. Those are called auxiliary lines, and the angles created here are exterior angles. And you know that these exterior angles, these two here, these opposite angles created by two lines that uh, intersect, what are those, what's the relationship between those two angles? They are vertical angles. So these two exterior angles are congruent with each other. And also, uh, this angle out here uh, is vertical with this interior angle. So these two angles would also be congruent. So when we are classifying uh, triangles by angles, we're talking about their interior angles. And when all three 
uh, the interior angles are acute angles, then the triangle is an acute triangle. When one of the angles is a right angle, so emphasize that little box there for a right angle, uh, then it is a right triangle. And let's go ahead and write the, you know the word, hypotenuse, hypotenuse please. Um, identify that. It's the side that's opposite of your right angle. And you, you know that the hypotenuse will always be the longest side in comparison to the other two legs here. And then an obtuse triangle is when one of the angles is an obtuse angle. And of course obtuse angle means it's greater than 90 and less than 180. Notice that the right angle, uh, right triangle, and also the obtuse triangle, they do have acute angles in them, but in order to be an acute triangle, all three of the angles have to be acute triangles, or acute angles. And then there's also the equiangular triangular, triangle, when all three of the interior angles are uh, the same uh, measure, they are congruent uh, with each other, and we will discover in just a minute here that each of those angles is 60 degrees because the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees and I just told you that these three angles are congruent to each other that's, that's what it means to be equiangular and so you take 180 degrees divided by 3 and that gives you 60 degrees we'll emphasize that in just a minute so when the sides of a polygon, poly means many, gone means side, so many-sided closed figure, are extended, other angles are formed. That's what we're talking about here with the auxiliary lines. The original lines, I'm sorry, the original angles are the interior angles, the angles that form linear pairs. Remember linear pair? So here we have a line that comes out and we have a uh, a pair of angles that create a line. These are linear pairs. Uh, the angles that form linear pairs with the interior angles, those are exterior angles. This guy out here is an exterior angle because it is a linear pair with this interior angle. So here we go. Triangle sum theorem. And theorem means something that we can prove. It's not an axiom or a corollary uh, that is, not, not, not corollary, what am I doing? Axiom or, and I am forgetting the name, what a, something that's accepted to be true uh, without proof. And I cannot think of the name. It's a axiom or, posh, there it is, woo -hoo! You probably had it before I did. Uh, positive. Uh, here we're talking about a theorem. It's not accepted to be true, uh, like a axiom or a postulate, but something that's proven to be true is a theorem. And we'll prove it in just a minute, or down the road I'll prove it to you, that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So it does not matter what kind of triangle it is, the sum of these interior angles will always be 180 degrees. Let me just show you that real quick so you have a visual on it. The easiest way to see that I think is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And see obviously this is 90 degrees. Uh, 45 plus 45 is also 90 degrees. 90 plus 90 is 180. Or we could uh, make cr uh, create a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And 30 plus 60 is 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. It also works for an obtuse triangle. Say this was 100 degrees and this one over here was 50, I would know for sure that this other one would be 30 because 50 plus 30 is 180, I'm oh, sorry, is 80, uh, plus 100 is a total of 180. Or if I had an acute triangle, 50 plus 50 is 100, uh, plus 80 is 180. So those are just four examples, but it will always work. Does not matter what kind of triangle it is, the sum of the interior angles of any triangle will be 180 degrees. Now, based on that, we can have we can create the exterior angle theorem. 
that tells us that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So we're familiar with adjacent. Remember adjacent is uh, right beside each other. So these two angles, for example, are adjacent to each other. Non-adjacent, of course, means that they're not adjacent. So that's one way of saying it. Uh, easier, I think, is to call them remote interior angles. So what they're saying is that this exterior angle is equal to the sum of these non-adjacent interior angles, or we're going to call them remote interior angles. Remote meaning far away. Um, this is a uh, interior angle that is adjacent to our exterior angle. Uh, these other two here are the remote interior angles. So we're saying then that the this the measure of this exterior angle is equal to the sum of these remote exterior angles. Okay. Now remember we talked about axiom and postulate. Those are accepted truths. And then conjecture is a, a statement that's presented forward as something that may be true. And we look for a counter example in order to shoot down that conjecture. But if we cannot find one, then it becomes a theorem, something that's proven to be true. Now let's talk about a corollary. A corollary is something that just spins off of or is easily proved from a theorem. So a corollary to a theorem is a statement that can be proved easily using the theorem. So the corollary below uh, follows the triangle sum theorem. What we're saying that once you prove the triangle sum theorem, then a corollary to that theorem uh, is this guy right here. And it is that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So therefore, we know, of course, that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle uh, is 180 degrees. So if this is a right triangle, this guy is 90 degrees. So since the sum is 180, if we take away this 90, we have 90 degrees remaining between uh, angles A and angle B. And when the sum of two angles uh, equals 90 degrees, uh, we call those two angles complementary. Remember, if the sum is 180 degrees, we'll call that um, comp what do we call <laughs> we'll call that supplementary. But in this case, they are the sum is 90 degrees, and so they are complementary. Okay, let me prepare you now for uh, question number three that you have there in your notes. And so let's look at this example in your book. Here's our triangle. These are our interior angles. This is an auxiliary line that extends outside of the triangle. And this is a exterior angle. And you will remember that this exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Remote means far away. So these are the two angles, or interior angles, that are farthest away from this exterior angle. So in order to find uh, what the measure of these angles are, or first of all to solve for x, uh, we can find that we know that the relationship between the exterior angle and the remote interior angles is that we add the sum of the interior angles equals the exterior angles. That's what we're doing here. So this is your exterior angle, 2x minus 5. That's your exterior angle equals the sum of the interior angles, 70 plus x. So there is our equation. Make sure that you understand where we are getting that equation. Just don't throw things together. Uh, understand the geometric relationships between, be, first of all, understand the, the labels of identifying, hey, this is exterior angle, these are your remote interior angles, and then know the relationship between them and then you can create your equation. And now that you do, the rest is just simple algebra. 
And I guess here we are doing what? Adding 5 to both sides. This becomes a 75. And then subtracting x from both sides. So this becomes an x on the left-hand side. So x equals 75. That feels good. But wait a second. They're asking for the measure. Remember italics m? The measure of angle j, k, m. Remember the center letter is always going to be your vertex, so J, K, M. So we're looking for the measure of this angle. What are they asking for? Don't even have that thing identified. So how do I find the measure of this angle? Well, um, different ways of doing it. Uh, what I could do is I know that X equals 75, so I know this angle up here is 75 degrees. And I do know that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. So I can add these two angles together. So 75 plus 70 gives me 145. So the sum of these two guys is 145. And then I can subtract that from one, whoop, 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 what are you doing here? Subtract that from uh, 180. And if I do that, what am I gonna get, 35? I think so. So this angle here is going to be 35 degrees. 35 degrees. What are they asking for? Oh, JKM. Man, I'm all messed up. I'm going, I was doing JKL to find this uh, angle here, but they want JKM. Hey, now that I've done this hard work though, uh, this guy being uh, 35 um, degrees, uh, I do know that these two, what's the relationship between these two angles? They are adjacent. Uh, angles. They're also a linear pair. Therefore, they are supplementary. Therefore, I can take <laughs> 180, uh, or I can take uh, 35 and subtract that from uh, 180. And when I do, I get 145. <laughs> that's what I had before. Hey, that's interesting. So